Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Miller and I'm the shoreline technician for Maitland Conservation. And in this presentation, I'm gonna go through an overview of lake levels on Lake Huron. So I'm gonna go through what influences these water levels and then go through some historical data. And then lastly, compare that data to where we are at now and explain why we are above record levels. So here is a diagram showing the drainage basins of the Great Lakes. And specifically, we're interested in the Lake Michigan and Lake Huron Basin. And these two lakes are actually considered to be one because they're th connected through the deep straits of Mackinac, which are right here. And um, because these straits are so deep, these lakes share the same water level. So for example, if there were to be high rainfall on the Lake Michigan side, over here, for example, it would influence the water levels on Lake Huron. So if you're thinking right now, we haven't seen a lot of precipitation in the past couple of years on the Lake Huron side, um, that's because it could be influenced by the precipitation that fell on the basin in the Lake Michigan side. This diagram shows all the different factors that influence water levels on the Great Lakes. So we have the inflow from the upstream lake, which would be Lake Superior in this case. And then we have the outflow, which would be the St. Clair, which then flows into Lake Erie and then Lake Ontario. And then we have these three factors in the net basin supply, like evaporation, precipitation, and runoff. And these three things actually play the largest role in water levels in Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. And that's because there is very little regulation from the inflow of Lake Superior and the outflow isn't regulated at all. So it's basically the weather patterns or climate patterns which influence the water levels the most. And specifically, it's the precipitation, which I'm going to get into uh, more in depth in future slides. So now I'm gonna go through just the historical water levels on Lake Michigan and Huron here. So this red line is the average water level for the past 100 years. And then these blue lines are what has actually happened in those years. So you can see from the highs to the lows, uh, fluctuates approximately two meters in uh, water levels. And you can see that it fluctuates from highs to lows, and this occurs naturally. Um, and there are really great fluctuations in here. But when you look at the trend, you can see that it kind of goes from extreme highs to extreme lows. Um, in about a 20 to 30 year period, for example, here and then up here. And um, that has kind of been the trend over the years. But when you fast forward to the end of the graph over here, you can see that in 2013, there was a seasonal record low. And then now just in 2020, we're at seasonal record highs. So that's in a period of only seven years, and scientists are predicting that these fluctuations will continue to be in shorter time periods like we're seeing now. Now I'm going to focus on water level data from 2019 through till 2020. So this top black dashed line are the record high water levels. This dashed line at the bottom are the record low water levels. The blue line there are the average water levels over the past 100 years. The red solid line is what has actually been recorded from January 2019 through to April 2020. The red dashed line are the projected values for the next six months, and the green line is the average of those projections. So just a couple of things I'm going to point out on this chart. First of all, we were close to seasonal record highs in June and July of last year in 2019. And then you would expect to see a seasonal decline in the fall and the winter, and that is from the cold, dry air masses moving over the warm water, which normally lowers water levels. But here you can see from September through till February, it stayed pretty constant. And this is because of the warm temperatures that we had, which reduced the evaporation. And then also there was a lot of precipitation that fell on the Lake Michigan side, which like I said earlier, um, anything that falls within that basin is going to influence the water levels on Lake Huron also. So that's why we didn't see that decline as usual. And then now you can see that from January through till April, 
we have been above the seasonal record highs. And the projection is for this trend to kind of continue through until August. And um, this is from the increased precipitation in the spring. And like we said before, because Lake Huron, Michigan isn't highly regulated, it's the precipitation and evaporation that are the main drivers of the water level. So when we go to predict the water level for the next six months, um, if we compare this to predicting the weather for tomorrow, it's really hard to do that and we get that wrong sometimes. So when we go to predict this in six months, there's a large variability here um, and uncertainty. So now I'm gonna get into specifics about the precipitation and kind of compare that to the water levels. So in this graph, this is showing the precipitation that fell over the Lake Michigan and Lake Huron Basin. Um, and so this zero is the average precipitation and then the red areas are where it's above average and the blue is where it's below average. So you can see that again, it does fluctuate a lot, goes from highs to lows. Um, and you can see this continuing um, throughout the past 40 years of data. And then especially if you wanna take a look at what is occurring now. Um, so in 2017, we had pretty high precipitation throughout the whole basin again. So it's not just on the Huron side, but the Michigan and Huron. And um, so we had above average and um, record precipitation in this time period. And it kind of stayed steady and high for um, up until 2019. So because the precipitation has been so steady and so high over the past three years, um, this is likely why we're seeing the high water levels now. I'm going to take that precipitation data from the previous slide and now I'm going to overlay the water level data. So a couple things I'm going to point out. First, I'm going to point out that record high water level from 1986. And if we look at the precipitation leading up to that year, you can see that we had above average precipitation for four years before. So all of that water is contributing to that record high in 1986. And same with record lows. If we look at below average precipitation for many years, we can then relate it to these many years of low water levels. And so if we take this all into account and then look at our current situation in 2020, we are again, we are above record highs right now. And this is because in 2017 um, to 2019, so those three years of data, we had above average precipitation with two of those years being um, record high precipitation values. So we can see that there is a very strong relationship between these water levels and the precipitation. So we can point out that the precipitation is the main driver um, influencing these water levels. Thanks for listening. My uh, contact information is below if anyone has questions about water levels or erosion on their property, or if they'd like to get a list of references for more information. The US Army Corps of Engineers has really great water level data and they update that every week and every month for monthly updates. Thanks again.